People hate the Rudy Gobert extension. Who the hell thought it would be a good idea to give Gobert a big ass contract? Gobert getting $200 million is ridiculous. Actually, those people are ridiculous for not realizing Gobert's worth. This video explains why it was a great move for Utah and how they're actually a move away from contending. Hey, it's Casey, welcome to AM Hoops. It is a huge week on the channel. Not only is the season tipping off, but DraftKings is sponsoring this video. I am legit excited because I've always wanted to work with them because I love daily fantasy basketball. It's really how I nerd out during the season. It forces you to guess which big time player is gonna go off in a particular night and like what bench player is gonna contribute. You rack up fantasy points for rebounds and assists, blocks, steals, and everything else, but the way you do it is you build a team to try to beat other players and you've got a budget of $50,000. Obviously, if you pick Giannis, he's gonna go off, so you have to get creative and really research to find out who else is gonna play well that no one's thinking of. To play for the $1 million prize for free, enter code AMHOOPS on your first deposit or click the link down below in the description. So again, promo code AMHOOPS not only helps out the channel a lot, but it lets you play for the 1 million bucks for free with your first deposit. Again, thanks to DraftKings for sponsoring this video. 205 million for five years is about 41 million per season for Gobert. Will that be one of the worst contracts in the league soon? No, he'll be about 33 years old at the end, still in his late prime. Is it an overpay? Also, no. It's what Utah had to pay to keep an all-star, all-NBA core piece. If they let Gobert hit free agency, someone would have paid him the max. They can't afford to lose him, so they paid him a little less than the Supermax. I think the Dallas Mavericks or the Brooklyn Nets in a trade would have been a great spot for Gobert's defense. If the Jazz didn't pay him, the Jazz would have lost Gobert with nothing better to replace him. I mean, having cap space is great, but not this offseason. They would have had to pay, I don't know, Victor Oladipo or Kyle Lowry or Chris Paul. They don't need them with Mike Conley at point if he re-signs on a team-friendly deal. And that's assuming a big-name free agent would choose Salt Lake City. Spoiler alert, they won't. Free agents with options choose LA or Miami or anywhere else. Small market teams like Utah have to draft good players or re-sign good players. The only other option would have been to trade him and Gobert would not have gotten back an all-star or all-NBA player. So that leads us to the fact that makes you go, hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. And that fact is, stars win in the NBA. We see it every year from the Heat to the Lakers to the Warriors. For a city as small as Salt Lake to have two stars is rare. The word overpay does not enter this conversation. Honestly, there was a point where this didn't even look possible. Donovan Mitchell was pissed at Gobert for being nonchalant about coronavirus before testing positive and shutting down the league. In hindsight though, that was the first big thing to happen that shut down the country. Rudy Gobert was the first high profile case of dozens. By now, it doesn't look as bad. But the point of all of this is winning a championship. Does Rudy Gobert for five more years equal a title? No, but they're not far off. Look, at this point, the Jazz are actually underrated by a lot of people. They should have beat the Nuggets in the bubble. And I'm not bitter because, you know, I picked Utah or that a Nugget made me shave my head. But they blew a 3-1 lead with no boy on Bogdanovich. I acknowledge Will Barton was out for Denver, but Bogdanovich was their second best offensive player. Utah lost over 20 points a night and a lot landed on Spider Mitchell's shoulders. The Nuggets still had their two best offensive players. People talk like the Nuggets are the far better team, that they're just one piece away. Well, the Jazz are in that exact same category. They were a bounce away from beating Denver in the bubble, and Utah is one piece away from competing in the West. With Rudy Gobert, they are a 50 plus win team every season. They've gotten to the conference semifinals two of the last four years. Obviously, they want better than that, but keeping Gobert was the starting point. 
He is the best rim protector in the league, has elite hands, and is the best rim runner out there. Dude averages over 15 points and 13 boards a night. When everyone on the Jazz forgot to play defense last year, Gobert kept them league average. But the actual reason the Jazz could compete with the Lakers someday is Donovan Mitchell. He is key to their ceiling, but without Gobert, they've got no shot. As a duo, Gobert and Spider Mitchell have not peaked. Their potential is why Utah could someday be in a finals. Among West Big Twos, they are behind LeBron and AD, Kawhi and Paul George, and Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. I've got them ahead of Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis though, because KP can't stay healthy and they still have to prove it. Mitchell is still improving and has an MVP type potential. In the bubble, Mitchell averaged 39 points a game against Denver. He was hitting threes that took our breath away. Look, I'm not saying he's gonna score like Will Chamberlain, but we learned that Mitchell has championship DNA. He raises his game as the stage gets bigger. I think Donovan Mitchell can be the best player on a championship team. He's a two-way player, which championship players need. He isn't afraid to take and make big shots. He isn't one-dimensional. He can score and play make with athleticism. Some players fade in the big moment. Mitchell has led his team to the playoffs every year and balled out. So they locked both stars up this offseason, but now it's time to build around them. Their current depth is getting old. Bogdanovich is 31, Mike Connolly 33, and so is Joe Ingles. The rotation will have to be turned over. But the key to winning will be getting that third star. They need to either draft or trade for big talent. And I honestly think trading is the only realistic way. I mean, look at their draft assets. They own all of their picks, except one that goes to Memphis in the lottery. The Jazz are gonna be a playoff team every year. That means they pick after 14th, and it's really hard to find great players there. The last champion built on their own draft picks was Golden State. They got Steph at 7th and Clay at 11th. The Spurs before them drafted Kawhi outside the lottery but traded up to get him. Everyone else won after a big trade or free agent signing. The Jazz will have to be all in on James Harden or Bradley Beal or some other disgruntled star. Honestly, at this point, I think Carl Anthony Towns is the most likely superstar to demand a trade next. The Jazz would have to hope that Cat is willing to play in a small market and be willing to offer everything they have to get him. So extending Gobert to less than the Supermax was a no-brainer. Utah has locked in two stars. Now it's up to Donovan Mitchell to keep ascending in that front office to get another superstar type talent. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a daily NBA video.